What's up guys, we are back with Sage. We are still gaming in the fan game section. Um, in this video, there's a few Mario games, which is a bit surprising because of how strict Nintendo can be with their properties. But before we get into that, we have some other games that we'd like to try out that I, you know, went through uh, this session. So the first game up is a Chow game that I assume is on the Unreal Engine since the player character is this mannequin with the logo on it. I'll be real with you. <laughs> I never really liked the Chow, like I did a little bit of racing with them and that's about it. In this game, I didn't stay long because there were prompts on screen telling you the controls, but none of them were to shake the eggs to make them hatch faster. There was a debug option to spawn in items, but none of them were to spawn in a Chow, so I was impatient waiting for the egg to hatch, so I just quit. So next is Dragon Man, which is basically a Mega Man fan game. You have your protagonist who is Dragon Man, and he has to defeat these eight robot masters. It has that classic Mega Man style stage selection screen, and what's unique about this game is the robot masters are all females. This is nice because uh, all the robot masters in the you know official Mega Man games were all male, except for maybe Clown Man. I swear that was a female. I'm Clown Man. You've got no chance. Or at least voiced by one. This game has controller support, which is great. The thing is, I suck at classic Mega Man games. And maybe that's because I was spoiled by having the X series be the first Mega Man games that I've played. Uh, I think this game is very difficult, but it is very well done. Emerald Fighters is another game that I've tried out this session. I think this is refer referred to as a rogue game. Anyway, you have a few characters to choose from, like the main trio, plus Shadow, SBO, Amy, Silver, and Mighty. The sprites look great. Some appear to be reused from Sonic Advance and Sonic Battle. But Mighty, SBO, and Silver wasn't in those games, so theirs has to be completely fan-made. The way I think this game works is you have to run around and just beat up badniks and collect as many points as you can before your health drops to zero. You can jump, throw punches and kicks, and do special attacks. I think there's a limit to how many special attacks you can do or at least a cooldown, but I didn't see any indicator on my screen showing me. I think this game was okay. It had responsive inputs, but it could have been much better if it had controller support. And now, it's time for some Mario. The next game is The Essence of Waluigi, which is a 2D style platformer. 
I love the art style of this game. I forgot what Mario game has this art style, but it's one of my favorites and I honestly wished it was used more often. So this game, uh, Mario can do some of his moves from the 3D games like the triple jump and the dive. This game was great. Um, I didn't perform as well as I would have liked due to the lack of controller support. Uh, overall, I would say that this is a great game from the portion that I have played. Next is the Essence of Waluigi 2, and that's kind of crazy because we just played Essence of Waluigi 1. I don't think I've ever seen a game and its sequel appear at the same stage. So, this game is a bit different from the first one. It has way more dialogue and cutscenes. You can skip the cutscenes if it bothers you, but you cannot skip the in-game dialogue like this conversation I had with an unknown character at the very beginning of the game. They just kept talking and, you know, rambling, and it was honestly getting a bit annoying. Once they finally, once they finally shut up, you know, I was able to start the tutorial stage, and I could not pass the tutorial stage. Like, the damn tutorial stage, bruh. Like, there was this section where you had to dive to get across a pit, and I just could not do it. The next game is Green Hill again, a Sonic demo on the Dash engine. You play in Green Hill, obviously, and you have access to a few moves like Stomp, Homing Attack, etc. In addition to that, you can sidestep. Uh, I had meter at the bottom of my screen for ring energy, but I couldn't figure out what it was for. I assume it was for boost, but none of the keys were making me boost. And yes, I said keys because once again, there was no controller support. So this is another one of those games that I just, I was bad at it, but I think it's good. I, honest, I honestly could have performed a bit better if it just had some dang controller support. And last up, we have Isekai Mario, the ultimate crossover. I remember playing this game at the last age. This is like Mario 64 with its gameplay. You have to complete missions to collect stars and then you use those stars to unlock new areas. I think the save data from the previous versions carry over to this version as my Mario started off with the Hammer Bros outfit. And I think that is what I wore when I played this game at the last age. So in addition to all of the cool costumes, there are extra characters that you can unlock from different games like Genshin Impact for example. This feels like uh, it's one of those bigger demos that I should go back to and play later on. Uh, I don't care much for the extra characters unless they're like Crash or Sonic the Hedgehog related. But the game itself is turning out very well. If you want to try these demos out yourself, I will provide a link in the description below. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you all next time.